There has been a lot of talk about John McWhorter's book, Woke Racism, A New Religion That Has Betrayed Black America. Um, and obviously enough, he's comparing this new ideology or philosophy of today about woke racism, anti-racism, to like the, the belief structure of a religion. To the right of me, he's being interviewed about the meaning behind his book. So I'm about to see if I agree with it or would I disagree about it. Um, so if you want to see that, go ahead and stay to the end of the video and let's go ahead and get right into it. John, you take issue with what you call the third wave anti-racism. Can you explain to people what exactly that means? Yeah, I can. First wave anti-racism is get rid of segregation and get black people to vote. That made sense. Second wave anti-racism wasn't heralded in the air, but it's in the 70s and the 80s, and white America learns that it's bad to be a racist person in general. A lot of that was happening then, and nothing was perfect, but lessons were learned. These days, there's this new way, and the new idea is that to get past what we need to get past, we need to teach non-black America that they are complicit in an abstract sense in a racism that's all around us, and that until you understand that complicitness and feel a certain guilt for your white privilege and realize that that stain will never leave you, then black America can't get forward. And my issue is just that I think black America can get forward without that grand psychological experiment, which it's not that I don't think it's pretty or something. I don't think it's going to work. And there are too many people who really need help for us to indulge in that third wave. That's my problem with it. So, so from what i take about his three differing waves explaining like anti-racism it's essentially like firstly it's getting rid of racist policies into the inst institutions um the second wave is kind of learning that well it's not just the policies but now it's kind of the culture as a whole the you know america society that we don't really believe in racism as much as we used to back in the 60s and whatnot and then today it's kind of like well, racism is ingrained uh, systemically into the nation. So even though if you do believe that you're not really racist, you kind of are a racist uh, because you're born here and you're, you're born in this kind of system and in this environment wh which pushes more racism. So you, I just want to make sure I understand. So are you saying you don't think the racism that people have been pointing out exists? No, racism does exist. Okay. And call me a cynic, I'm not sure how much we can completely eliminate it. And this is the mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. I think that black Americans can succeed despite the fact that non-black people are psychologically imperfect. My main interest mm -hmm. is in what we can do to move ahead and to finish the job. And I'm not saying racism is okay, and I'm not saying there's no such thing as systemic racism. I'm saying that focusing on teaching America lessons about that isn't necessary to creating happier black lives. Well, if you have something that doesn't make any sense, you have to call it out. And I hate to say that that's true even when you're thinking about racism. So silence is violence. So you're supposed to say something. And silence and violence rhyme. So silence, sort of. Silence is violence, okay. But then on the other hand, don't elevate black voices over yours. Don't talk too much. Where's the happy medium? If you don't date black people, you're probably a racist. If you do date black people, you need to consider that you might be a racist because you might be exotifying black people. What do you, what do, you do with that? You can keep going with that sort of thing. And what I'm saying is that sort of thing, we call it the race thing. And everybody kind of looks over each other's shoulders and talks about how complicated it is. I'm not sure what the point of that is. There are people out in the world who are suffering. We need policy. We need pragmatic solutions, not these abstract conversations that are more about feeling guilty, teaching people to be guilty, virtue signaling. All of that to me is recreation. We need to get back to what the civil rights leaders 50 years ago were but doing. You said before so kind of what are you getting that whole like explanation there seems like the essence of his book. So it's essentially that you have uh, these prophets, right? People of like Benjamin Crump or Al Sharpton or kind of BLM were like, these are the prophets of woke racism and they're kind of they have this secret eye that they can analyze america and they can point out these these uh racism but it's it's too abstract it's too abstract it's implicit um and you have this inability to see it because you're born into this you know whitewash system um everything's environmentally ingrained into you you have no free will you can't really reject it it's just it's a part of your chemistry it's a part of your psychology um and it's only like black americans that can really see it um and the thing is is that well don't worry right have guilt realize that you are uh implicitly racist you're supposed to have this guilt and fight and come fight with us against this 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 whole entire system um it, it's okay that you you don't have this ability to see it but if you come with us you know that you're following the right path just take it on faith um and that seems like the essence of how like the whole structure of woke racism or anti-racism is very similar to like the belief system um and the hierarchy 
uh, more importantly to religion. Uh, it, it, it invokes guilt. Um, it takes a lot of faith. A lot of the ideas that are presented are very abstract and they're not explicit. A lot of it can't be proven or demonstrated. It's essentially like if I'm a white person, I reject the idea that I'm racist. They're saying, aha, that's proof that you have you, you have white privilege. You just rejected it. Only a white person could do that. Um, so like there's, there's this kind of just super abstract things that don't really make sense. They, they're not easily demonstrable. Um, and, and it goes and it kind of goes hand in hand with religion, just the whole structure of it as a whole. I don't get this idea that we need to have this grand teaching about the depths and the significance of white guilt and complicity before black people get help. I just think that we strayed from what civil rights was supposed to be about. So change the system. Yeah, the system should mm -hmm. be changed. Right. And I don't think that these psychological teachings are necessary to that changing of the system. I think we get caught up in something that's frankly kind of easy. I'd like to pass discussion. Twitter is easy. You go on Twitter, you look at people yelling at each other. Frankly, I have guiltily participated in some of it during the pandemic when I got bored. But that sort of thing is not necessary to working in the real world and solving the real problems that real black people right. have. And so based on my last video, if I could rehash it, I think the solution to racism or systemic racism or whatever, uh, both is kind of the idea of individualism and individual rights that people are not defined by their, their ancestry. They're not defined by their racial group. They are who they are and they have to make the decisions on their own and whatever the decisions and values that they have, that's what's defined them. It's through their own actions. Um, and when you evaluate per each person as an individual and don't care about the type of collective that they come from, that's the means in which we abolish racism because racism is essentially, you know, here's a group, a, a group of race and I'm going to attribute certain characteristics to them. Uh, because they are that race, you know, um, and, and just looking at each person as an individual that they're not defined by their collective is how we get rid of racism. And you said that America is past racism against black people. But then in this book, you write that anti-racism is a religion. Mm -hmm. um, given that the attorney general, the FBI director and Homeland Security secretary all said this summer that the biggest domestic terror threat in this country is from white supremacy. Do you believe that racism then is also a religion and that we're honestly living in a post-racial society? Like what, what, what is your, since you're against anti-racism mm -hmm. training mm -hmm. and policies, mm -hmm. what, what is your solve? Well, remember, I'm not against anti-racism. It's not that I'm in favor of racism. I mean, the detour that we've gone into now. But I'm glad you bring up the Forbes piece, because that, that comes up a lot. That was a while ago. There was a sexy headline that, you know, the, the, the people who do these magazines and newspapers, they give it the title. What I was saying there was that Barack Obama's election proved that racism isn't what it used to be. And I will openly yeah. own that what I meant then, because I mean it now, is that racism, although it's a bad thing, although yeah. we must tamp it down, is not as conclusive an obstacle to black success as we often say. You, That's what the You said our proper said. concern is not whether racism still exists, but whether it remains a serious problem. And That's you said I, yeah. the election of Obama proved that it no longer does. That's what I meant. Yeah, I meant that it shows that the country is not so high-bound bigoted as it used to be, and that if that man can be elected president, remember, then it happened again, and with more competition, yeah. I was saying that, yes, racism exists, but that is not the necessary prelude to making a difference in real life. Well, there goes the end of the video, but... Uh, to rehash what he's saying or to imp implement my kind of thing, uh, racism in the 60s and racism now is definitely not the same, nor does it have the same magnitude. I mean, like people in the 60s, the whole buses filled with people were, I'm not going to be too explicit, explicit, it's YouTube, but like there was, there was crazy things going on in the 60s that would pop up on the news and then just everybody would shrug their shoulders. But now if like you do something like that, like you're going to be on the news everywhere. Like, you're going to be not on newspaper, you're going to be on, like, CNN, you're going to be everywhere, and everyone's going to, like, blast you uh, because of these activities. Uh, in the 60s, I mean, it was just here and there, and it was, it was kind of normal. Um, so, racism doesn't have the same degree or the same extent that it did prior, um, and therefore, it's not, in his words, not much of a, a setback as, as it once was, that we still have the ability to uh, progress ourselves, the black community does. Um, and we don't, we don't, it's not necessary for it to go on to this third wave of anti-racism since we still have this freedom and ability to go do whatever we want and progress as, uh, as, uh, uh, you know, as a race in general, black America in general. Um, so with that being said, um, I kind of gave, gave my take about what he meant by religion, the religion essence. And I, and I agree with that, um, that it is very abstract and there are like profits and you must sacrifice your livelihood to this this grand idea that you can't really understand and grasp 
Um, that's very religious, um, and it's it's very it's taken on faith and belief. It's it's the same type of uh, things that religion does today. Um, but yeah, with that being said, I don't have much disagreement. Um, and yeah, uh, have a good day.